Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the very first episode of Talk Nerdy. We're going to give you some time. I'm going to give it uh, about a minute before uh, we start. I want to make sure everything is nice and healthy. The YouTube channel is stating that it is receiving content. That is always a good thing. Right now it is 5.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Friday, uh, January 5th, 2018. And as you can see within today's um, title, it's really important because it affects a lot of us. So let me stop talking and let's get down to it. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and simple because I have a PowerPoint. I just want to keep it super simple with you guys and let's get started now meltdown and specter cpu expert explain what the hell is it it has been a huge conversation between me and my it manager at my nine to five job and i am literally updating all our workstations all our laptops all the mac computers within our infrastructure to make sure everything is solid you know right now it is only a band-aid that we are you know putting into these machines it's not a solid solution so now this is the only way to start the year 2018 already we have a massive cpu design flaw a couple of questions come in mind why now how long was it there and was it there hiding and waiting why all of a sudden is popping up right uh the Googling and all the articles that I've read so far or a bunch of these tech sites have stated that this exploit or design flaw of these processors have always been there. So why now? Why are they showing up now? Now, everyone, even myself, are freaking out because of these security holes because you have to understand it's, it's not like a particular security patch that's being affected that was pushed out to Windows or Macs. It is a hardware, Intel. AMD processors, uh, ARM processors. These are everywhere, everywhere. Like, come on, Intel, ARAM, uh, AMD, ARAM processors, they're everywhere. Our personal machines that we have at home, laptops, workstations, PC games, they have these processors in them. For individuals that built uh, computers from the ground up, when you purchase your processor, is one of these brands. What the heck? It's scary. Now, I really feel like this is just like the Windows XP and uh, Server 2003 uh, issue that we had in 2017, where Windows pushed out uh, a, a specific patch and hackers found uh, a workaround to get to your machine if you was running one of these operating systems. Uh, it, it's really, really scary. Now, Code names that are given for these particular security flaws are Meltdown and Spectre. Now, so far, Meltdown is targeting Intel processors for what I've read so far. Okay. Now, Spectre, on the other hand, uses Meltdown to cause more harm to the core to the core flaw of the CPU, making it much easier for this flaw to be attacked. Now, from my understanding, it looks like there is a patch for Meltdown, but they haven't really found a solid solution for Spectre, and that sucks. Now, security experts are basically stating that there's no particular software such as McAfee, what is it, uh, Malwarebytes or Norton. None of that stuff is going to help you out. The best thing to do is to redesign processors now the processes that you have right now at home or your current machine the best that you could do is put a band-aid over it that's it and then hopefully during this year when new machines are coming out the processors are going to be redesigned to fix this security flaw that it has right and i think it's still too early in the stages uh, i'm hoping they do find a solid solution for this now, so how does it really work? How does Meltdown and Spectre work? Okay, 
So for what I've read, it looks like it deals with Windows and Linux, the way that it uses um, or processes or utilize hardware features within the machine, right? The kernel, right? It 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 it, it kind of like I don't know. It manipulates and takes advantage of the kernel level of the operating system. Now today's CPUs runs instructions to enhance the performance of your machine, right? Uh, normally we don't see this. This is happening all behind the scenes, right? That's why we love our machine because it's running extremely fast. Now, if a CPU can run specific instructions, it's capable of returning itself back to a stable state. Now I gave you guys an example and the best example is basically if you're dealing with VMware or Citrix, uh, Proxmox or whatever type of software you're using to virtualize or virtual box, uh, what is it, virtual box. Uh, it's just like taking a snapshot of your virtual machine before you push out a major update to the operating system. I always tell you guys, if you, especially when you're dealing with your SCCM server, take a snapshot before you push out the latest build. Because if something happens, you could always revert back to the old snapshot. So that's what the CPU does for um, within the kernel, right? Now, the floor and the processors will now allow instructions that typically won't be able to run. It will be bypassed from the CPU, checking it, and then run on your machine. This is what Meltdown is. Technically, it's like me telling my son if, you know, my son comes to me and says, Dad, I want orange juice, and I tell him no. He's not going to get orange juice. But then he comes back and says, Dad, I want some orange juice, and I tell him no. Or actually, my son says, Dad, I want orange juice. And then he just bypasses me and just go get the orange juice without getting my permission. Okay, so these specific instructions are bypassing the CPU by checking it. And it's not getting permission from the CPU. It's just going and doing its thing. Nice. A nice example would be Flash Player plugin, uh, plugin running within Chrome. And, you know, it's doing its thing. It's showing the YouTube channel. It's doing its magic behind the scenes. But it's it's doing other things that it should not be doing like reading your computer memory and getting information held within the computer memory within ram accessing information from other applications that are installed within your your system now that stuff is scary as hell okay now patches are being pushed down and from my understanding it looks like some of these patches might cause some problems with compute performance. If, you, if you're if you running a very old processor, uh, I didn't really get what kind of generation with the Intels. I'm assuming maybe anything that's lower than fourth generation Intel processors, you might get some performance issues. Anything that's up to like maybe sixth or seventh or eighth generation processor, you're not gonna see a huge delay in performance on your machine, okay? Uh, especially for us gamers that have maybe an i7 7th generation processor, you're probably not going to feel any impact. Okay. Now, what can what can you you know what can be done? Uh, Meltdown is being patched right now by Microsoft today. Uh, they're stating an emergency update, and uh, for us WSUS server Windows, this WSUS is Windows Service. What is it? Uh, Windows. Windows up a oh Windows Services update server uh, updates most likely you receive within your WSUS server yesterday. They were synced up to your server and they're ready to deploy. For me, I got all the KBs and I pushed them out today. All right, after working hours, I make sure if you are using WSUS within your infrastructure, push them out after working hours, okay? Because your machine will need a reboot to finish and finalize the updates. Now, apparently Apple pushed out an update that fixed this whole uh, meltdown inspector kind of issue around December for what I read online. And that would be the Mac OS 10.13.2. Uh, just make sure uh, if you do have that update, you're good to go. My thing is just make sure that your home computers, PC computers, whatever, are up to par. They're, they're fully up to date. Just update your machines. I know it's a pain in the butt, especially if you have a PC game. You, you feel like when you push updates, all of a sudden your machine starts running slow. These security updates, these antivirus updates, they're healthy 
to you know they're there to keep your machine healthy push them out i know they are pain in the butt but still you need them uh, like I said, upgrade to Mac OS 10.13.2 is the one that uh, Apple pushed out to fix these issues. I don't really think is a, a solid fix. It's just a Band-Aid until they find a, uh, a solid solution. Now, another good thing to do is whatever vendor you're dealing with. For me, I, I have Dell, I have Lenovo, I have MSI uh, or Toshiba, whatever type of vendor uh or model that you have, go inside their site. If you have a Dell machine like an Optiplex 7010, go to Dell, locate the 7010, go to drivers, and download the latest BIOS and Unify updates. Update your BIOS. That is a, a, one of the best steps that you could do right now because Windows Updates is going to push out the updates for you. So you just, you just have to wait. It's taking time because Microsoft is pushing all that stuff out. Apple automatically is going to have your software updates there just check go to app store and just check for updates make sure you're good to go okay now uh, a good friend of mine from my discord channel dude fox live provided all the kb uh numbers for windows 8.1 i can't believe they're providing an update for windows 8.1 windows 10 with all is many many builds even the latest build which is 16 299 which is version 1709 this is the kb that you you will be looking for now most likely I, I would say give it some time your windows operating systems will receive the update now the machine that i'm using currently right now streaming and showing the powerpoint i'm going to show you something because there is going to be a little glitch you just have to be patient okay and for us server admins, these are the KBs that you need to look for. Uh, as you can see in the list, there's no 2003, uh, 2003 <laughs> or 2008. Only 2008 R2, 2012 R2, 2016, and also uh, version 1709 server core installation. So, again, push out these updates within your servers. And if you are running Hyper V, this is also this is also going to be affecting. Uh, Hyper-V servers because Hyper-V servers have other vir you have virtual machines running on your Hyper-V server and that's going to be affected so make sure you update your Hyper-V uh, server before you even do that back up your Hyper-V server uh, I'm trying to think how about VMware uh, servers that are running ESXi how to approach that I don't even know if they have a patch for that yet uh, they probably do because I think they do have like Linux stuff I got to check the discord to see if anyone posted anything on the Linux. But so far, uh, Dude, Fox Love, uh, Dude Fox Live posted up the information for the Windows 10, Windows 8.1, and Windows 7. I appreciate that. And also for the Windows Server stuff. And uh, again, guys, it is extremely scary uh, with this, this thing. It's the beginning of the year, and this is the way to start the year with this craziness. Uh, I do want to show you guys real quick what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to show you guys my desktop real quick. So there's a possibility if you go to start computer, go to properties and within properties, like if, if you like me, you want to like check for updates, click on updates. This is what's going to happen. It's, it's just going to be, it's not going anywhere. If you go to the task manager right now, it's running. It has, it, it's not like it's saying not responding, it's running, but it just doesn't take me to Windows updates. So if you're a person like me that do not doesn't want to wait and you want to go inside Windows updates and push out the updates yourself, you're going to get this. It's just going to get stuck. It's just thinking and thinking. I can't even close the window. Uh, I have to physically go inside task manager and close it. Like right now, uh, I, I don't think I could go to and zoom in. So let me do the zoom it utility. Let me open the zoom and zoom in for you guys. Like right now, see a little little uh, circle death thing. I'm not able to click on it and close it. The only way to close it is within Windows updates. So I'm just going to kill it for now. Uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to physically download the updates from the microsoft site uh when i have some time uh i'm going to post up the link that you could go to to get all the kbs if you're a person like me that's very impatient 
and you're trying to get into the Windows updates and it's not loading up for you and you want to push these updates, I'm going to provide the link at the bottom, hopefully uh, hopefully tonight. Uh, right now, I'm trying to finish out all the updates that I need to push out for my uh, workstations at work and also all the Macs. The Macs are good to go. I'm happy for that. I'm just waiting for the deployments for the PCs. But hopefully you guys enjoy this live stream again. This is going. This is the very first episode of Talk, Talk Nerdy. Uh, I'm probably going to do this uh, a little bit more. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Uh, we got a couple people in the live stream. Thank you for joining. Uh, and i catch you guys on the next one, right? Peace out. All right, so how do you end this? Because I always forget how to end this. Uh, I think you end it this way.